do you think that some of the work that you and your administration did with regards to, I guess, trying to right some of the wrongs when it comes to our relationship with China, that those efforts have been continued over the last couple of years? Yes, very much so. Uh, Gina Raimondo, my successor, has been very strong on China, particularly on semiconductors and other high-tech export controls. And while they've had a lot of discussion about perhaps cutting some of the tariffs we had imposed, they really haven't done anything yet. I think there's a growing realization within the Biden administration that the ultimate real threat is China, not Russia. Secretary, on that note, the other side of that says that you need to be looking at cutting tariffs to help with inflation, that those tariffs inevitably have been an inflationary force on the American economy. Do you see tariffs as inflationary, and are they still worth it, given the also inflationary environment that we find ourselves in? Well, several answers to that. First of all, the amount of export imports from China on which we have tariffs is only a few hundred billion dollars. If you compare those to the size of the economy, it's almost a rounding error. So it's silly to say that our tariffs on China had any major impact on inflation. Second, what's really been happening is a lot of goods that were made in China are no longer as cheap as they were, and so production is moving to South Korea, to uh, Vietnam, to Thailand, to South Korea, to Indonesia. Third thing to remember is the dollar is very, very strong. It's strong against the yuan, it's strong against most currencies, and that very much offsets any potential inflationary effect of imports. So I think that's just an excuse. The real problem with inflation is too much money was pumped into the economy and we have too constrictive an energy policy. Those are the real factors that caused it. And then that's been supplemented by supply chain dislocations and by the war in Ukraine. Talk to us about, with your experience, I mean, prior to being Secretary of Commerce, of course, you were chair, lead director of more than 100 companies in, in 20 different countries. When you're looking at perhaps a, a less globalized world, the implications that has, you hear of Fed members saying the onshoring effort is inherently inflationary as well. Is that going to be a longer term sacrifice that has to be made? I think the biggest danger we have in terms of long-term inflation is the failure of our educational system to train people properly. We have the least vocational training of any OECD country. That's a real problem for getting people who are not college-bound into useful jobs, particularly high-tech jobs. Our schools are also not emphasizing science, technology, engineering, and math. How can you survive in an increasingly technological global economy, let alone U.S., if you're de-emphasizing STEM? And if you look at the lower grades, say K through 12, we keep falling further and further behind in relative math scores, relative reading scores, just about relative any scores to other countries. That's the kind of thing that's going to cause economic dislocation going forward, just as it is already. Well, we've already, yeah, we've already seen that uh, economic dislocation. I I'm curious, though, about the solutions here. We've seen some efforts uh, from the current administration, your administration, and, and even the Obama administration to sort of address some of those. And uh, as always, you know how Washington works. It gets put through uh, the ringer there, and basically what comes out is basically nothing. How do you sort of address that in a way that is going to be politically palpable to the, uh, to the folks who run this country? Well, in our administration, Ivanka Trump and I co-chaired the workforce development effort. 
and we got American companies, some major, some middle-sized, some minor-sized ones, to pledge more than six million internships over the next five years. I don't think the current administration has been pushing that movement very hard, but it is essential, and they generally work, the companies generally work with the community colleges because they are very open to curricula that are business friendly. Mm. They don't have the ideological bent that a lot of the high schools have. And, and the high schools are teaching a lot of what I regard as nonsense rather than the valuable skills, both intellectual and physical, that people need to survive. So. There was an initiative that we already had in place. I think they could very well build upon that. Mm. And I think it's a wonderful thing to have collaboration between community colleges and uh, companies. What yeah. many of the community colleges have done is bring the educational curricula to the workplace. Mm. So it's much less disruptive of a worker's time. Mr. Secretary, just finally wanted to ask you, circle back, when you think about maybe China, much more so than Russia, being a bigger threat to the U.S., what about the data security, WeChat, TikTok, some of the issues that were underway when you were serving in, in the former administration? How big of a risk is data trying to get in their hands on it? Data are a very, very major risk. And in fact, they're both an opportunity and a risk. Properly used, they're a great opportunity. I think you could say that data is the new oil in terms of stimulatory power to the economy. But the risk is it can be used for evil purposes. Mm. And as you know, when I was in office, we were very adverse to TikTok, getting all this information about young children. Uh, I still think that's a big, big mistake um, because it's not the right way to use data. And it's, it's not just that. They've been doing a lot of hacking of government files, civilian files, all kinds of things. I'm afraid that at this point, the Chinese know more details about the American public than we know about the Chinese public. And that's bad to have a knowledge imbalance.